We continue our coverage of Indo-Pacific 2025 here in Sydney, Australia. I am now with uh, Saronic, Matthew Tracy, Vice President of International Law. Matthew, good afternoon, great to meet you. Good afternoon, good to be here, Xavier. I understand it's the first time that uh, Saronic is uh, exhibiting at uh, Indo-Pacific. Uh, can you share with us uh, what's uh, the outlook of uh, Saronic in terms of business here in Australia? We're so happy to be here at Indo-Pac, but we've been in Australia for about a year and a half. So our, our company is three years old. In that time, we've gone from zero to a thousand employees. In that time, we've raised nearly a billion dollars of capital. And in that time, we brought multiple products to market for the US Navy and its allies. Our presence in Australia is very intentional. We chose to come here first because we believe that the Australian Navy and the US Navy, very strong correlation in doing joint operations all around the world. Australia is the largest island in the world. It is a 99% exporter of bulk commodities. It has one of the largest maritime responsibilities in the entire world if you look at search and rescue and EEZ. So we think Australia is a perfect place for Saronic to bring its products, which are rapidly brought to market, scaled very easily, but as a way to integrate with Australian industry. So we see our presence here as being a beachhead, not only for Australian industry to work with us and integrate as a component, subsystems or uh, things that sit on or around the boat, but also how do we take all of that technology and create an export market for Australia to look also into the Indo-Pacific. As you mentioned, uh, Saronic was created uh, three years ago, so we are fairly newcomers and yet uh, you already have to this day, a pretty significant and extensive uh, range of uh, ASVs. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that range and how it relates to uh, the potential needs of the Royal Australian Navy? Absolutely. So because of our very strong capital funding position, um, we've been able to partner directly with the customer, not necessarily chasing contracts, although we have multiple contracts, being able to partner directly with the customer, understand what their needs are, and bring products to market very fast. We started with smaller vessels. So what's right behind me, Corsair, is a 7.3 meter vessel with a 1,600 kilometer range with user-defined payload integrations. This is a commercial vessel. This is a vessel that is not controlled by ITAR. There isn't issues with FMS. We can export this very easily around the world from the US to allies of the US. Um, this, this vessel has multiple applications, um, but those applications sit both in the naval sense and in the commercial sense as well. Scaling up from here, our, the, what, the platform that I'm perhaps most excited about, especially for Australia, is Marauder. In terms of speed and scale, this will be the fastest ship that has been built in the US since World War II. How do we do that? We had the idea for Marauder in January. In 45 days, we went out, found, acquired a shipyard in Louisiana. We retained the workforce, we tripled the workforce. Our first welds on that vessel were in June this year. That vessel will be in the water by the end of the year. We're building multiple vessels at risk. There are programs in the United States and the Allies that we are actively pursuing with this vessel. We're very excited to bring Marauder to the market. We think it's gonna be a game changer, fully autonomous surface vessel at a scale that allows long range operations for multiple different missions Importantly though, all of our vessels, Saronic made a very intentional decision to invest in data center level grade GPUs. These are floating centers of compute. So when we think about all the sensors you may wanna have on a vessel, whether it's a seven meter vessel or a 55 meter vessel, all of the sensors are constantly bringing on data. That passive perception allows these vessels to operate entirely at the edge. All of that processing can be done at the edge because of the GPUs we have on board. We're very proud to have a global partnership with NVIDIA to support putting these GPUs on our vessels. The other thing that lets us do is when the mission needs to evolve and change, we have the, 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 the power on the vessel to continually adapt the mission set to whatever the customer needs. And that's what excites all of our operations team, all of our engineering team, and our leadership at Saronic to be able to listen closely to the customer and put capability in the water in months, not years. Another impressive uh, project, uh, to me anyways, uh, by Saronic is what you call Port Alpha. Can you discuss a little more about to our audience about what is Port Alpha? I'd love to. So I mentioned the shipyard that we acquired in 45 days to build Marauder. That's a, a, that's a stopgap solution to what we see as the larger problem. Uh, US shipbuilding and global shipbuilding in the West has actually taken a back seat to other parts of the world. We see Port Alpha as our responsibility 
to continue being a vertically integrated company that provides for national economic resilience in the US, Australia, and the allies. So what Port Alpha is, is a shipyard that we are designing and building from scratch. We are in discussions right now on where that will be. The, fir the first one, Port Alpha, will be inside the US, but this allow will allow us to build small, medium, and large fully autonomous surface vessels. So this means vessels that go well beyond the 55 meters of marauder into very large capabilities. We think this will not only bring defense capability, commercial capability, but jobs. What we saw in Louisiana with Port Alpha, by not only retaining and doubling the workforce, we think we'll actually be able to provide jobs for advanced manufacturing for autonomous naval vessels, autonomous civilian vessels inside the US. Now the reason it's called Port Alpha is because it's the first. We see this as a concept that allow us to have a very honest discussion, not only with maritime leaders, but leaders of industry on how we can bring shipbuilding to the Allies. Uh, Port Bravo will be coming in the future, so I look forward to talking about that in the future. But we see this as a concept for economic revitalization, maritime security is exactly what we're here to do. Matthew, thank you very much. Thanks, Xavier.